There's an old expression, hard cases make bad law. It's going on right now in Alabama. Friends, in the middle of all of the darkness that is around us, there are some bright spots, and our good friends in Alabama are a beacon of light and hope. I'm Randall Terry. This is Voice of Resistance. The state of Alabama is on the cusp of outlawing child killing, period. The only exception is one that medically and ethically can be argued, and that is that if the mother's life is immediately threatened by the continuation of the baby in her womb, vis-a-vis -vis an eptopic pregnancy. So in American history, when medical science understood the prognosis that there was a baby growing inside of the woman's fallopian tube, that baby is going to die, and the chances are the mother is going to die if the, if the baby gets to the point where the eruption of the fallopian tube happens, the mother is going to bleed to death internally. Now, the, the ethical debate around that, there are some people who I love and who I respect who say, no, you have to let that pregnancy continue and the mother and the baby will die. I do not share that opinion. I believe that the, the, the concept of self-defense, literally the, self, the concept of self-defense comes into play here as a point of law. So the goal of taking a child out who is a fallopian two pregnancy, the goal of that is not to kill the baby, the goal is to save the mother. And Dr. Bernard Nathanson, God rest his soul, he believed, and I went to his grave as far as I know, believing that we will soon be able to remove that child from the fallopian tube or to remove the entire fallopian tube and the child and to implant that child in either an artificial uterus or perhaps a, another womb. And that could be something that is tried. In other words, if, if you if you want to say, look, you can not deliberately set out to kill the child, all right, then we're going to remove the child and try and implant the child in an emergency surgery in the woman's uterus or in an artificial womb or in the womb of another woman. That aside, the Alabama law, and I say this with a smile, the Alabama law makes no exceptions for rape, for incest, for emotional instability, nothing. I'll say it again, no exceptions for rape and incest. Now, the logic of this is very simple, friend. We do not kill children for the crimes of the fathers, period. Any more than you would kill a four-year-old or an 18-year-old or a one-year-old. You don't kill a child for the crime of the father. And there's a lot of people in this world who were conceived in less than ideal situations, and there are a good number of people in this world who were conceived as the result of a criminal act. Now, if you want to talk about killing someone, talk about killing the rapist. If you want to talk about somebody dying, it should not be the child. But I digress. <clears throat> I'm telling you this for two reasons. Number one, there is a plethora. There's a lot of bills that are coming out of various states right now heartbeat bills and this bill. The heartbeat bills are the bills that say from the moment that you can hear a child's heartbeat, which is about six weeks, you cannot kill the baby. Now, this would effectively end child killing and abortion in almost all states because a woman doesn't know that she's pregnant before then, nine times out of 10. It would not deal with plan B. It would not deal with RU486. And so therefore it's not far enough. I'm going to come back to that. But these bills are still good because they would save 90% of babies from the, the abortionist scalpel. Let's come back to Alabama. This is really important. And I feel, I feel anger and pity toward the woman who I'm about to call to task and to rebuke. There was a lady who testified. She's 32 years old. And Lauren, if you get to see this, I hope that you come to your senses. Her name is Lauren Holland. She testified before the Senate committee, the state Senate in Alabama, and she was asked if she would agree with the bill saying that a woman who has a baby in her uterus, she's pregnant, if she should not be allowed to kill her baby. So this is what she said. <clears throat> I'm praying for y'all. 
and I wouldn't want your job. Side Lauren Holland, 32 years old, her two-year-old daughter climbing on her chest. She said she would have the baby if she were raped. But making that the law, quote, this is her quote, that that there is real hard for women. I'm a Christian. I'm 100% pro-life, but I don't think, but I don't think I want that in the law, close quote. Lauren, you're not 100% pro-life and you don't understand. The very fact that you said out of one side of your mouth, I'm 100% pro-life, and then you say that you don't want babies protected who were conceived by rape. You want them to be able to be murdered because you know that abortion is murder, right? So you're going to solve a woman's rape by murdering her baby? It's ludicrous. It's insanity. And it shows that, number one, Lauren either doesn't know what she's talking about or she has allowed her emotions to take front and center. This is why at the beginning of the show I said hard cases make bad law. You can have sympathy. You can have rage for these women. Rage for them, sympathy for them, rage toward their assailant, their rapist. But the solution is not killing their baby. And no one should dare to say the words, I'm 100% pro-life and... I don't want babies who were conceived by rape and incest to be protected by law. It's hypocrisy and it belies the fact. I know I'm over my time, but I gotta make this point. When George Tiller was shot in the head at his church, the abortionist who'd killed thousands and thousands of babies, I said, we grieve for him. We grieve for his soul because he may not have had time to prepare his soul to face God. And I said, this man was a mass murderer. A mass murderer. So a murderer was murdered or a murderer was slain. And I would not equivocate, I would not grant a single inch. And there was a pro-abortion pontificator on one of the talk shows who said, me, me accepted. He said, these other pro-lifers, not talking about me, he said, the very fact that they're out there condemning Tiller's killer and saying how horrible it is, they really show that they don't believe abortion is murder. Because if they believe that abortion is murder, then they would be glad that Tiller is dead. That's what he said. Now, he was taking a point of logic to its extreme to try and corner us into surrendering. Oh, no, we really don't believe abortion is murder. We just don't like it. No, abortion is murder. When we come back from this break, we're going to... And so my point is, those of us who say we're pro-life, we have to be pro-life. That means you cannot kill a baby for the crime of the father. Yes, women and, and abortionists have to face criminal prosecution if they try to kill a baby, no matter how that baby was conceived. Okay? Period. And if a woman's life is threatened by the pregnancy, then we talk about some type of emergency surgery. And friends, that's what the law was. That's, that's justice. Equal justice under law. You protect the baby. We can talk about the punishment of the rapist, but let's protect the baby. When we come back, I'm going to play a 30-second video that was released by Lieutenant Governor Ainsworth from Alabama. Boy, it's powerful. Thank God that in some of our states, there's still a shred, maybe a strong bulwark of moral decency and courage. It won't bow down to the godless media elite in New York and in and in. Washington, D.C., and won't cower to the poor little Hollywood babies in Hollywood who are going to boycott sex. Really? Are you, are you joking? Are you really going to do that? Let's talk about that. Just, you know, let's talk about it. I'll be right back. Introducing Roxy Guitar. If you're a guitar or bass player, whether you play acoustic or electric, check out Roxy Guitar. I've been playing for over 40 years and seen guitar stores all over America. I've never seen a store like Roxy Guitar. Roxy Guitar has over 700 guitars in stock, over 1,500 pedals, over 200 amps. For the beginner or price conscious buyer, there's Michael Kelly guitars. For the serious player or professional, Roxy Guitar has the finest selection of guitar lines I've ever seen. You know I love warrior guitars. Roxy Guitar has over 100 warriors in stock. 
Let them know you heard about Roxy Guitar from Randall Terry and receive 10% or more off your purchase on select items. Go to RoxyGuitar.com. I'm so thrilled that in Alabama, one of the co-sponsors of the bill is Representative Terry Collins. She is actually the sponsor of the bill, so she's, an, she's a Republican woman, and she said, look, I'm, what I'm trying to do here is get this case in front of the Supreme Court so Roe versus Wade can be overturned. It will come as a heartache to many of you to learn that an organization called the National Right to Life, the National Right to Life, which thankfully has, has lost a lot of its political clout, but still has some in some states. They have been opposed to bills like this for decades. For decades, the, one of the largest groups in the country for financial contributions, for political clout lobbying, has been opposed to making abortion a crime, to making murdering babies by abortion a crime. National right to life. If you're giving money to them, in my opinion, you are throwing your money down a rat hole. Worse yet, you're actually helping perpetuate the Holocaust because you're helping pay the bills of people that want to collaborate with the baby killers. And that's what National Right to Life does. So some of us who have been active and leading in the pro-life movement for many years, such as myself, we have been saying we need to flood the courts with, child, with laws against child killing. doesn't matter what the current Supreme Court makeup is. Just do it over and over. Oh, but that's horrible. That will only add to the body of law that supports Roe versus Wade. And Supreme Court is not going to want to overturn Roe. They're going to want to uphold their own precedent. Bullcrap. Bullcrap. People who are baby killers don't need an excuse to continue the slaughter. And any judges on the court who want to end child killing don't need, they won't give a rat's behind about precedent and starry decisis, leave it as it is. They're not going to care because they know in the depth of their soul that abortion is murder and that this Holocaust has to stop. Now, I don't know about Gorsuch. I don't know about John Roberts. John Roberts could be just another treacherous enemy of Christianity, another treacherous enemy of the babies. If you're an enemy of the babies, you are an enemy of Christianity because Jesus said, whatever you do to the least of these, you do to me. Whatever you do to the least of my brothers and sisters, you do to me. And he said, allow little children to come to me because to such belongs the kingdom of heaven. Jesus said, the kingdom of heaven belongs to children. Okay? So if you, if you think that somebody can be a friend of Christianity and be in favor of butchering babies by abortion, you're deluded. So I don't know what John Roberts deal is. I know that Anthony Kennedy is a, is a betrayer of the faith. He's an enemy of children, and I would hate to be in his shoes when he faces God. We'll see if he repents. We'll see what, what, what he faces. We're all going to get to see it, okay? We're all going to get to see it. We're all going to see the judgment for ourselves and for other people. But I'd hate to be in his shoes on the day of judgment. Man who said he was Catholic, said he was pro-life, got on the Supreme Court, and then betrayed God and betrayed the babies. So anyway, Terry Collins has got it right. Get these cases before the Supreme Court. Ignore national right to life. The poor folks in Texas, they're in the throes of a battle like this where the treachery is coming from so-called pro-lifers. <clears throat> I've got to take a break. Don't go away. There is a huge breach of security on WhatsApp. If you are a user of, of Facebook products, the great Satan, they have actually eclipsed certain radio networks. It is now Facebook that is the great Satan. I wonder if Mark Zuckerberg wants people to get the mark of the beast. I also want to speak tonight directly to Muslims throughout the world. We respect your faith. His teachings are good and peaceful. 
and those who commit evil in the name of Allah blaspheme the name of Allah. We have reaffirmed again and again that the United States is not and never will be at war with Islam. Islam teaches peace. Islam is a religion of peace. They are not Muslims, they are monsters. We've been told that Muslim terrorists have hijacked the peaceful religion of Islam. But Islamic art and literature tell a very different story. To know the truth, we only have to study the narrative of the founder of Islam, Muhammad, in his own words. I am not a technical person. My Facebook page was canceled because of my work and my scholastic study showing the truth about Islam and Muhammad, the founder of Islam. I don't use WhatsApp, but evidently there's 1.5 billion users. 1.5 billion. Those numbers are so staggering. So somebody figured out a way where they can call the phone that has the WhatsApp device and immediately download software, even if you don't answer the call. Just by calling the phone, you can download software that will allow them to get all the contents of your phone and even turn the camera on. So if you are a WhatsApp user, Facebook is saying, hey, quickly, quickly go and get the upgrade to the app. You know, get, quickly log in and <laughs> fix the virus. I shouldn't laugh, but I'm just telling you, we have 14-inch boys. They do not have a cell phone. They have one eye tablet between them. They have laptop computers that are part of their schoolwork that are out where we can see them. Friends, I'm telling you, these devices, we don't know. We don't know where this is going to take us. But if you are a WhatsApp user, beware, because there's danger on the horizon. Uh, I went over long on one break, so I'm gonna take another break now. Joe Biden is going to have a big rally. We have really stirred up a hornet's nest with the militant homosexuals. I have. And we've got some stuff coming up I want to tell you about. Please stay with me for the rest of the show. I'll be right back. What Would Mohammed Do? Islamic Terrorism Explained is the best movie series documentary ever produced on the life of Mohammed and Islam. How do I know? because it's what critics are saying. John Moore, radio host and author said, I learned more from what would Mohammed do about Islam and Islamic terrorism than I've learned from everything I ever read and watched in my entire life. Friends, this is what the experts are saying. No one has ever done what we've done. I encourage you to get one, two, four copies. Call 304-289-3700 or order it at the address or the website that you see on the screen. Introducing Roxy Guitar. If you're a guitar or bass player, whether you play acoustic or electric, check out Roxy Guitar. I've been playing for over 40 years and seen guitar stores all over America. I've never seen a store like Roxy Guitar. Roxy Guitar has over 700 guitars in stock, over 1,500 pedals, over 200 amps. Let them know you heard about Roxy Guitar from Randall Terry and receive 10% or more off your purchase on select items. Go to RoxyGuitar.com. I wanted to use this last segment to proffer an idea that hopefully will be an encouragement to you. I was talking to a friend the other day who has a history in counseling and in psychology. We were kicking around the idea of what the impact of these godless devices on kids because this is not a child-friendly segment, so you need to have kids leave the room. I'll give you a second. So we, we, have, uh, we have some friends who are former homeschoolers, put one of their kids in a public school, high school years, and some child took, a, a boy, took a picture of his private parts and sent them to a girl in the school who already had a boyfriend, and she was so angry at the boy who took the picture of his privates and sent them to her that she posted it online or whatever, I don't even know, I, I, I didn't go any further than hearing the story, but basically the whole school, all the kids in the school, 
teachers are now seeing this picture and all that surrounds it, all the hubbub and all the, the illicit sexual issues. So we, we just don't know where this is headed. We don't know. Our, I, I believe that the way God made us, that we were not designed by our creator to have such a flood of data and images. I mean, neurologically, I don't think that we were created. And there's been a lot of studies showing the impact of multiple hours of television. The studies are still in early stages showing what multiple hours on these devices can do. But so far, it's all negative. It's all really negative. But there's a moral component to this that hit me the other day. I was listening to our pastor preach and it was out of John, I believe John chapter 21, where Jesus is on the shore and Peter is there and he's cooked them fish and he's about to ascend into heaven. And he says to Peter, Peter, do you love me? Now he uses the word agape and Peter responds with the Greek word philio, uh, Philadelphia, which means a, a real respect, a, a, an admiration. So Jesus said, do you love me with a sacrificial love that is willing to die for me? Do you agape? And Peter responds, I have a great admiration for you. So Peter's guilty. Now, to give you some backdrop, Peter had betrayed the Lord. I'm sorry, Judas betrayed the Lord. Peter denied the Lord three times with cursing and swearing. After just having told Jesus, though all these forsake you, I will die with you. Peter said, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat. But I've prayed for you that your faith will not fail. And after you've repented, strengthen your brethren. Those are the words the Lord said to him. So Peter denied Jesus three times. Now they're together on the shore. All the disciples are there. Jesus looks at him. Peter, do you love me? Do you have a, 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 an agape love for me, an undying love? Will you, will you lay down your life for me? And Peter casts his eyes down and says, Lord, you know that I have great admiration for you. And Jesus says, tend my lambs. Jesus didn't rebuke him. Jesus didn't say, yeah, I know. I knew you didn't really love me. Who else could I pick now to be the leader of this pack? He says, tend my lambs. Then he says a second time, Peter, do you love me? Agape love, sacrificial love. Peter again responds, Lord, I love you. I have deep respect and admiration for you. Jesus says, feed my sheep. Remember, Peter has the ache of his own soul knowing that he had denied Jesus three times. Now the third time Jesus says to him, Peter, do you have a strong admiration for me? He uses the Greek word that Peter was using, philia, where we get Philadelphia, city of brotherly love. Peter, do you only have a great admiration for me and deep respect? Peter says, Lord, you know all things. You know that I have a deep respect and admiration for you. And then Jesus says a third time, feed my sheep. And then he talks, to, Jesus talks to him about the way he's going to die, his martyr's death. And it hit me. Bringing this all the way back around to these godless devices. There are people, good people, who, like Peter, have done something that they regret. And the haunting memory of that makes them think that they are illegitimate in trying to serve the Lord. Peter could have said, you know, flesh and blood didn't reveal this to me, but God revealed to me that you're the Christ, the Son of God, and Jesus has made certain promises to me and said certain things to me, that I'm the rock and all this, but I, I blew it. Jesus says, get up, Peter, get up. Even if you only have a strong admiration for me, feed my sheep. Do what I'm telling you to do. Fulfill your duty, fulfill your call. I think that these godless devices that we call them, and the flood of pornography, the flood of evil images, the, 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 the things that we, that we are distracted with, buying, selling, Amazon, I think that it has 
caused a dissipation, a, a sucking the life out of our souls, and that it's plagued people with guilt and, and, and taken away their strength to resist evil. And Jesus would say to us what he said to Peter, do you just have a great admiration for me? Then fulfill your destiny, feed my sheep, fight for what's right, do the right thing. God will use you no matter what, just do the right thing.